So the media has done a phenomenal job over the past couple of weeks keeping us updated on R. Kelly's story. You know, from his conditions in prison to his sentencing of 30 years in federal prison to Joycelyn Savage, who we thought was his girlfriend, actually being his fiance, and even letting us see the court documents filed as a memorandum. However, there are other entertainers that are falling from grace and the media is kind of really hush hush about it, but that's all right because here we're going to be giving them the final curtain call. You are now listening to the unpopular opinion, the RUO with your girl Rondo, bringing you the latest on news, politics, entertainment, and more. Like, share, and tap in. What's up, everyone, and welcome to Rondell's Unpopular Opinion if you're new, and welcome back if you're returning. Either way, make sure you are hitting the like button because when you do, you get us out into the algorithm, and make sure you are sharing this video because I promise you, not too many content creators are probably talking about this. Now, when I say this, I mean the situation that is taking place where Oscar-winning director in Hollywood Paul Haggis. And this story actually has been taking place for the past three weeks, but the mainstream media has made it their business not to cover the story in its entirety. Now, three weeks ago in mid-June, Paul Haggis was actually arrested in Southern Italy on charges of sexual assault and aggravated personal injury. And this was alleged by an unidentified woman who actually pressed charges against him. Now, many people probably are familiar with Paul's work because he is the director of the Oscar-winning film, Million Dollar Baby, which I believe was released in 2004, which starred Clint Eastwood and Hilary Swank, and also the hit movie, Crash. I believe that's also an Oscar-winning movie. And we see appearances in that film with Terrence Howard, Sandra Bullock, and even Don Cheadle. And though Paul has been in the tabloids, it has been in the blogs and newspapers before on other tumultuous situations, which we'll get to in a second, this one pretty much takes the cake. Now get this, according to Variety.com, they're stating that multiple Italian press reports and a note from the public prosecutor of the nearby city of Brindisi states that Paul is charged we're forcing a young foreign woman, and in this instance, it means a woman who was not Italian, to undergo sexual intercourse over the course of two days in Ostuni. And this is the city where he was supposed to be holding a new film event called the Allura Fest. From what the woman is stating, the sex was not consensual, and she's stating that he basically essentially trafficked her, where she was basically forced to have sex with him over the course of two days. And according to the rap, they stated that this woman, even though she's unidentified by name, that she's 30 years old, she is from the UK, and she stated that after she was reportedly raped for days, that Paul dropped her back off at the airport in the early morning hours, where police say that she was found by flight crew in a shattered state. She was assisted by airport staff, border police. They gave her first aid and then transferred her over to a mobile police unit. And from there, police agents took her to the A. Perino Hospital in Brindisi, where basically a rape analysis was done on her. And as I stated in the beginning, Paul is not a stranger to these type of allegations because back in 2018, he was actually sued by a publicist whose name is Haley Breest. And she basically alleged that he had violently raped her after a premiere in 2013. Now that case actually took a turn for the worse because what ended up happening was three additional women came forward with their own sexual misconduct accusations against Paul. And back in 2018, Paul had denied that any of these things actually took place and said that these women were pretty much lying. So Paul was arrested in mid-June and placed on house arrest by Italian authorities for the situation that happened with the 30 year old English woman. And the 2018 accusations and lawsuit needed a trial day set. However, due to COVID, everything was pretty much delayed. And after all these years, 
accusations and new arrests in another country, what are the odds that now all of a sudden the 2018 case will move forward and the trial date was set on Monday? Haley Brees and the other accusers will get their date in a New York state court and this is set to take place October the 11th of 2022. Now the rap.com pretty much gives more context into Haley's civil suit that she filed a couple of years back and other people kind of really hopped on the bandwagon. They state that according to what she's alleging, the attack took place in Haggis's Soho apartment where he immediately began attacking her after attending a premiere on New Year's Eve of 2013. According to Haley, she was unable to escape and she was violently raped, but she didn't contact the police out of shame and fear. Now I'm gonna give my opinion on this situation and I'm gonna give it based on a chronological timeline of events that have been taking place in Paul's career since his apex of success within the Hollywood industry. Now his Academy Award winning days were I believe around the time of 2004 to 2006. And after that happened, as far as speaking of chronological timeline, we have this situation where Paul does something colossal. And one of those things that he did to me, in my opinion, that was colossal was basically denouncing his Scientology membership. All right. He was a huge figure within the church of Scientology. And he was actually a Scientology member for over 35 years. And he resigned from the church of Scientology because of their opposition to gay marriage. So we all know back in 2009, during Obama's presidency, what was going on back then as far as legalizing gay marriage with the Supreme Court and kind of really advocating for the LGBTQ community to actually be recognized as legal marriages within the United States. Paul feels that a lot of the slander and the attacks that have been on his name have a lot to do with the Church of Scientology because of his denouncement and not only of his denouncement, him supporting other members who have also denounced the Church of Scientology publicly. So he feels as though that they play an imperative role and an imperative factor as to why his name has went through so much slander. Now, after the denouncement of the Church of Scientology back in 2009, we had the situation where his divorce with his wife, Deborah became finalized in 2016. And this divorce settlement was crazy as far as what Deborah was set to inherit from Paul in the divorce. And this was actually a TMZ exclusive back in 2016, where they stated that Paul was actually going to be writing more checks than actual movie scripts. And they stated that Deborah will be getting $20,000 a month in spousal support. And at the time they had a 17 year old son and Paul had to pay another 5k per month in child support and foot the bill for the kids schooling high school and college. Additionally, the settlement that they reached in the divorce finalization had called for Deborah to get a big slice of Paul's income, which stated that 20% of anything he makes over $1.2 million a year on top of the monthly $20,000 check. And that also does not include the $5,000 a month he had to pay in child support. But he did walk away with two of the Soho apartments and three Florida properties, but he definitely had to shut out a lot of money for his divorce. And then came the allegations of sexual misconduct and assault. Y'all already know when these accusations come up, they require you to hire a lawyer that's going to work overtime and you will be paying the retainment fees for it. Now here's why Paul may have a point as far as the church of Scientology being involved. If you look at the chronological timeline, in 2017, 2018, around the time with this lawsuit, the initial lawsuit was filed by Haley Breast. This is around the same time when Leah Remini came out with her TV show, speaking out against Scientology, I believe on A&E. And Paul was pretty much a part of that process. 
and actually supportive of that project. So it is not far-fetched for the Church of Scientology to stick these allegations on him because he was basically putting allegations against the church. So this could have definitely been a tit for tat situation. However, it can also be some validity in the situation where things had gotten out of control and basically people didn't know their limits and things got out of hand. He can definitely be guilty of what these women are stating that he's guilty of. However, I would be taking this situation with a grain of salt as far as evidence base. And that's for the situation that's going to take place later on this fall in New York with Haley Brees and the other accusations, which actually go all the way back to 1996, because there's not enough tangible evidence probably in that civil suit. But as far as with this rape situation with the woman from England, and what he was on house arrest for in Italy, they may actually get him on that if they're claiming that they have evidence. We're gonna see how this plays out, but again, this just ties into the demise of Holly Weird, the fall of Holly Weird. We see Danny Masterson actually trying to throw away his case, and the judge basically told him no last week. So one by one, they all continue to fall. And that's all I got for you guys on this one. Major shout out to you for making it all the way to the end. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you feel about it. Do you feel like these accusations are the inner works of higher powers? Or do you feel as though there's some legitimacy with this? Drop down and let me know. Thank you, like I said, for making it all the way to the end. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And y'all be well. Peace.